One of the biggest things that separates League of Legends from other MOBA games is pre-game preparation. Things like runes and masteries which League has that no other MOBA does. This helped distinguish League back in the day when it first came out from Dota and other Dota style games, giving obvious strategic differences between the games and it helped it cultivate its own audience. Masteries are the little more simplistic of the two. I mean, they're pretty easy to understand and you can of course just copy down some pro players' masteries and champion select right there, editing them however you want, even up to the last minute right before you get into to game, but runes are a little more complicated and require a little more thought on your behalf even before you queue up for a match. With all the rune options in League of Legends, technically there's 12.31 septillion combinations of runes that exist. Not all of these combinations work out as something that's viable, obviously, but that's still a pretty large number nonetheless. So I mean, runes have a lot going on in them. So today we're going to talk about just what the best runes are and more importantly, why they're so good. Players can always just copy down what pro players do and not really think about why they're taking those specific rune combinations, but having that understanding will improve your gameplay quite a bit. You may not actually know this, but each rune type is specialized to encourage going for certain stats. Red runes, or marks, are meant for offensive stats. Yellow runes, or seals, are meant for defensive stats. Blue runes, or glyphs, are meant for magic stats, and quintessences are supposed to be for utility. Each type of stat boosting rune is given a primary tier in one of these categories, where taking that specific rune will grant you more of a bonus. For instance, if you want armor, you could technically take either armor reds, armor yellows, or armor blues. They exist as separate runes for each of the categories, but while armor yellows will give you plus one armor per rune, armor reds will only give you plus 0.9 armor, and armor blues will give you a measly plus 0.7. This creates a sort of meta around which runes are the most efficient to take in certain combinations. I've thought about doing this video in a number of ways, but let's just go through each one of the most popular and successful runes that players are currently using and highlight what makes them so good and when you should take them. Starting off with the most standard and intuitive of the rune types, let's kick this off talking about marks. Marks generally have three different stats that you'll see most people run, either flat attack damage, magic penetration, or flat attack speed. Way back in season one and early season two, most players actually ran armor penetration, or what is now lethality, instead of flat AD. But after a while, a player named Wicked discovered that running flat AD actually gave you more damage than armor armor penetration. Most players don't have too much armor in the early game, and sometimes they don't bother building armor items at all late game, and in this case, armor penetration really isn't being all that useful for you. On top of that, if you need armor penetration, you can always just buy armor pen items while your opponents are buying armor. Taking flat AD marks instead could still give you all the armor penetration you need in your build if you're getting the items, while also giving you a lot of bonuses from that flat AD. You have an easier time last hitting in laning phase, you get more damage per auto attack for harassment in early trades, and you also get higher bonus damage for your AD scaling abilities. It's pretty simple, and this is why we almost always run flat AD marks on AD champions. Magic Penetration is run as marks for AP champions for the opposite reason. If you remember me mentioning that your glyphs are the tier 1 runes for magic stats, you can infer that they are the most efficient runes to run flat AP with. Flat AP blues will give you a bonus 1.19 ability power per glyph, while flat AP marks will give you just 0.59 bonus ability power, that's half the AP. Most champions start off with a fair amount of magic resistance, and plenty of them have great scaling magic resistance throughout the game, so taking the super efficient magic pen reds is what most mages do. The final rune typically run here is just flat attack speed. This is mostly run either in supplement to flat AD on certain champions that scale well with attack speed, like Kennen, where you'll sometimes throw three attack speed marks with six attack damage marks together, but more often than not, they're run as nine attack speed marks on junglers. The reason for it is junglers are almost always auto-attacking non-stop, and if any of you have played RuneScape, you know what that means. In games where you throw out a lot of auto-attacks, it's more efficient to have weapons that throw out more attacks with less damage rather than to have big, huge damage numbers with something that attacks much less often. The consistent auto-attacking gives you a more reliable and overall higher DPS, and this is why in League of Legends, junglers who do nothing but auto-jungle creeps early can get more bang for their buck to taking attack speed marks rather than flat AD or magic pen. Let's move on to seals. Seals might actually be the least diverse category of runes currently in League of Legends, so let's try to blow through them quickly. We're getting to the interesting ones, don't worry. For seals, the only two runes you'll see most people run generally are either flat armor or health per level. The most popular of these is armor, which actually used to be taken almost 100% of the time and had to be nerfed in patch 4.5. The reason it's so popular, even today, is because armor is one of the 
most important stats to have in the early game of League of Legends. Even if you're playing mid lane up against a straight AP caster, someone like Aurelian Soul, even Aurelian Soul and all the other AP casters in the game will still be throwing out auto attacks in laning phase. Autos that deal physical damage and can shred through your health if you don't have any armor. Every single champion in League of Legends, regardless of whether they're AD, AP, tank, or whatever, they all have auto attacks that deal physical damage, and taking that armor so you don't get shredded down to nothing in laning phase is pretty important. The only other option that you'll see some people take every once in a while is health per level, or maybe sometimes a couple of flat health runes in addition to health per level. For those of you who are unaware for the difference between flat bonuses and bonuses per level on a rune is the scaling. Flat bonuses will give you a greater bonus in the early game, whereas a per level bonus will give you more of a bonus late game. For instance, taking nine flat health seals will give you 72 health bonus all throughout the game. Levels one through 18, you'll get that 72 health bonus. Scaling health will give you a 216 bonus health at level 18, but it will only give you 12 bonus health at level one. Now, some runes are different than others if you're looking for a break even point where the scaling starts giving you more of a bonus than the flats are in game. MR glyphs and MR per level glyphs, for instance, have a break even point around level nine, which means levels one through eight in game, flat MR will be giving you more magic resistance as a bonus, but scaling MR will start giving you more of a bonus levels nine through 18. For flat health seals versus health per level though, that break even point is around level seven, really early in the game. This means if you want health through your seals, only take flat health if you're taking that bonus to have it in the early, early laning phase, levels one through six. Otherwise you wanna go for the scaling health. Sometimes scaling health is a really good option for certain champions, either if you don't think your lane opponent is gonna be auto attacking you at all, if you're a jungler who scales really well with health, or if you're a tank that wants to get armor through either just getting items or maybe armor through their quintessences. And then finally, we have Glyphs. Glyphs might actually be the most interesting rune category as we generally have a lot of experimentation with no clear-cut answer for what's best. Generally, you'll see most pro players run a few different types of Glyphs, either flat MR or MR per level, flat AP or sometimes AP per level, flat cooldowns or cooldowns per level, or some sort of combination of these six rune types. The AP and MR runes are pretty obvious why you would take them. AP, if you're a mage that wants to be aggressive, taking into consideration the scaling bit, for what sort of situation you're in and when you need that bonus AP to be working for you the most. The break-even point for AP versus scaling AP is around level seven, similar to health. And the same deal with magic resistance that we just mentioned. If you're going up against an AP champion mid lane, you'll get a huge benefit in reducing the damage their abilities are dealing. It's also important to note that a lot of mid laners hardly have any natural scaling magic resistance in their champion's kit. So taking these runes can be a great way in getting some. The cooldown runes though are the most interesting runes in the entire entire game in my opinion and require the most thought needed when deciding to take them. As you guys know, in League of Legends you have a cooldown reduction stat, something that will reduce the cooldown of your abilities, but you can't reduce them all the way down to zero, so it's capped. The maximum amount you can reduce cooldowns is 40%. There's 31 completed cooldown reduction items in League of Legends, completed as in they aren't some sort of component, they can't be built into anything else, and of those items, every single one of them gives either 10% CDR or 20% this is interesting because if you're taking scaling cooldown reduction for every single one of your glyphs, then you'll get 15% CDR at level 18. That's an odd number. You can't build 5% cooldown reduction with a finished item in game, so you can't get an even 40%. You'll be playing inefficiently going over the cooldown cap if you try to, which is something that most players will make fun of you for if you do. The other option is taking flat cooldown reduction glyphs, which will give you a flat 7.5% CDR, which is again another odd number. That that will end up with you wasting CDR and going over the cap if you try and reach the cap of CDR in your build. This is why, generally speaking, players will do one of three things when getting cooldown in their runes. They'll either take all flat CDR glyphs with one flat CDR quintessence to get 10% flat cooldown, or they'll take six scaling CDR glyphs for 10% at level 18. The final option some players run is three scaling CDR glyphs with six flat glyphs, a mixture of 5% flat CDR and 5% scaling at level 18. There is a mastery that increases your CDR cap to 45%, so you'll have to worry about getting that 5% in your runes if you're going to go for that. I've also noticed every once in a while there'll be a pro player that will take 5% CDR while not going for this mastery, which is something that 
I don't really understand why they would do that. I mean, maybe this is some sort of strategy way beyond the comprehension of my low diamond mind. The thing I find so interesting about all these runes, though, is just how much planning goes in ahead of time. You have to plan your rune pages for certain situations that you might come up against, keeping your build in mind before the game even starts. And you do so with some pretty creative ideas and strategies that you can run. One thing you may have noticed I haven't talked about yet here are quintessences. And that's because quints might actually be the most diverse and creative of all the rune categories. Categories. There are some stats that quintessences give you that no other rune can, including lifesteal, movement speed, and uh, actually experience. I forgot that was in game. This is where things can get really creative. Like, do you want to take lifesteal to sustain in laning phase? Maybe flat AD for more auto damage? Maybe a mixture of both? Maybe a mixture of lifesteal and attack speed? Or will you need to run a cooldown quint to get your 10%? Or hey, two cooldown quints give you 5%. That's another mixture that you can throw into everything. A lot of the time when you see a player giving a guide for runes and masteries on a champion, they'll tell you the marks, seals, and glyphs that you should be running, but they'll say you can run whatever you want for quintessences. That's the case for Aurelia, and that's how diverse strategies can be. At the end of the day, you can run whatever you want, and there's a lot of perfectly viable options for champions that I haven't even mentioned yet in this video. Stuff like lethality marks, split pen marks, or attack speed glyphs are all things that you see the occasional high tier player run, all of which are perfectly viable in certain situations. Runes might actually be one of the least understood yet most important areas of League of Legends. Knowing your strategy beforehand, planning it out, and executing it well will help you so much more than just copying whatever a pro player is currently doing without knowing why. So I hope this video has helped you out a little bit with that. If you enjoyed it, feel free to leave a like, feel free to subscribe. I'll see you all on stream or in my next video. But until then, thank you very much for watching. Good luck in solo queue and have a wonderful day.